Hello and welcome to the channel. In the last video we talked about an Eacanthus or the banded sunfish genus. In this video we're going to talk about the next genus in the sunfish family and that's Ambloplitus or the rock bass genus. Rock bass, by the way, aren't really bass, but first we need to explain what a bass is and the origin of the word bass. The word bass was used as early as the 18th century to describe fish that were perch-like. Why perch? Well, since most people coming to North America were from Europe, they were already familiar with the European perch. It's a fish with a huge distribution that includes most of Europe and the northern half of Asia. European perch were also harvested commercially, so they were in fish markets all over Europe, and it was just a fish that everyone knew and could relate to. So what makes a fish perch-like? Well, the dorsal and anal fins are divided into spiny and soft rayed portions. The pelvic fins usually have one spine, up to five soft rays, and are positioned forward near the head. Most types of bass also have tenoid scales and an elongate, moderately compressed body shape similar to perch. Now some people might be wondering why rock bass and black bass are in the sunfish family instead of the temperate or true bass family. Well, the modern system of taxonomy that's still in use today was developed in Europe during the mid-18th century. The European bass was described by science in 1758. Rock bass and black bass, being native to the New World, were not described until the following century. Why does this matter? Well, when the European bass was described, it more or less became the type species for the temperate bass family, meaning all other species grouped together with the European bass would have to possess some shared characteristics. Rock bass and black bass have almost nothing in common with European bass, so that could obviously never happen. Okay, getting back to the rock bass genus, Ambloplitus. Ambloplitus, by the way, means blunt weapons, and this name refers to the two broad, flat projections, which are sometimes called spines, but they're not really spines. The outside edge of the gill cover just has an irregular edge, and it makes a couple of points. There are four species in the rock bass genus, and they are, of course, the rock bass, which is also the type species, the shadow bass, the Roanoke bass, and the Ozark bass. The rock basses, like all centrarchids, are freshwater species native only to North America. They have a laterally compressed body shape, and the anal fin has multiple spines. The dorsal fins are fused or broadly connected, and the males also construct and guard a nest. And what are some of the characteristics that distinguish rock basses from other centrarchids? The anal fin has five to seven spines with nine to 11 rays. The spiny dorsal has 10 to 13 spines and the soft dorsal has 10 to 12 rays. The operculum or gill cover has two blunt points. They also have a more elongate body shape compared to most centrarchids. Only black bass have a more streamlined body shape. Rock bass have several nicknames that include, but are not limited to, red eye, red eye bass, goggle eye, and rock perch. It's important to recognize these are just nicknames and rock bass are not red eye bass. Rock bass can and do have red eyes, but the red eye bass is actually an upland species of black bass native only to the Coosa River drainage. Rock bass, on the other hand, are native to the Mississippi River Basin, the St. Lawrence River, and the Great Lakes system. Other populations are most likely introduced. The common name rock bass and the scientific name rupestris, which is a Latin word meaning living among the rocks, describe the preferred habitat of this fish. Rock bass like clear, rocky pools in creeks and rivers, they can also be found in clear lakes and reservoirs along rocky shorelines. Rock bass are the only species in the rock bass genus that's commonly found in lakes. Shadow bass, Roanoke bass, and Ozark bass are primarily stream fish, so you really only find them in creeks and rivers. Rock bass have relatively large mouths, so they do eat other fish, but as a species, they usually feed on crayfish and insects. 
Average size rock bass is probably 8 inches, and they max out around 15 inches. The IGFA All Tackle World Record rock bass weighed 3 pounds, and there's actually a tie for the record. One came from Lake Erie in Pennsylvania, and the other one came from the York River in Ontario, Canada. Before we move on to the next species in the rock bass genus, I just want to mention that all of the nicknames we just talked about for the rock bass are also sometimes applied to the other species in this genus. Shadow bass, Roanoke bass, and Ozark bass can all have bright red eyes just like rock bass. But eye color is variable in sunfish, so I don't put a lot of emphasis on this characteristic because it's not a reliable way to field ID any of these fish. I've seen eye color change in less than a second after taking a fish out of the water. Body coloration can also change in seconds from stress. Lots of factors can influence fish color, like water clarity, and there can even be local variations in color, so that's why I'm not spending a lot of time on fish coloration. I actually have a very good example of this to show you. The image I have for the shadow bass is a very dark individual, so a lot of people are probably like, oh, I would never confuse that fish with a rock bass. But shadow bass are not always dark like this. In cold water and or stained water, they can look like this fish. Now I caught this fish in July, so the water obviously wasn't cold, but it was a little stained from a thunderstorm. Rock bass and shadow bass look pretty much the same. The best advice I can give anyone is to know the drainage you're fishing because for the most part, the native ranges of these fish do not overlap. Some of these fish have been moved outside their native ranges, and when I target these fish, I'll try to post a map that shows the areas they have been introduced. But for now, I'm just showing the native ranges, and there's a reason I'm doing that. We already talked about how rock bass are native to the Mississippi River Basin. Shadow bass are native to the southeastern United States, from the Apalachicola River drainage in Georgia to the lower Mississippi River Basin in Louisiana. Shadow bass are also found in the St. Francis, Black, Arkansas, Red, and Upper Washita River drainages in Missouri and Arkansas. That's one reason I always try to mention the drainage or river system I'm fishing. So if I'm fishing the Tennessee River drainage in Georgia or Alabama, I know it's a rock bass. If I'm fishing the Mobile Basin in Georgia or Alabama, it's a shadow bass. The specific name, Areomus, means large eye. This name describes the somewhat larger eyes of the shadow bass compared to other species in this genus. Shadow bass prefer clear rocky creeks and small rivers. Shadow bass have relatively large mouths, so they do eat other fish, but as a species, they primarily feed on crayfish and insects. Average size shadow bass is probably 5 inches, and they max out around 12 inches. The IGFA All Tackle World Record shadow bass weighed 1 pound 13 ounces, and it was caught from the Spring River in Arkansas. The Roanoke bass is another species that closely resembles the rock bass. The specific name Cavifrons means concave forehead, and it refers to the concave profile over the eyes of the Roanoke bass. Another way to ID the Roanoke bass is to look at the cheek scales. The cheek area of the rock bass is completely scaled, but Roanoke bass have no cheek scales or only a few deeply embedded scales. Roanoke bass are native to the Roanoke, Chowan, Tar, and Noose River drainages in Virginia and North Carolina. So if you're fishing a creek or small river in one of those drainages, it's most likely a Roanoke bass. Roanoke bass have large mouths, like other members of this genus, so they can and do eat other fish, but they primarily feed on crayfish and insects. Average size Roanoke bass is probably 8 to 10 inches, and they max out around 14 inches. The IGFA All Tackle World Record Roanoke bass weighed 1 pound 5 ounces, and it was caught from the Nottoway River in Virginia. The Ozark bass is another species that resembles the rock bass. The specific name, Constellatus, means clustered and refers to the clustered arrangement of irregular dark spots on the side of the body. Ozark bass are also sometimes described as a more slender version of the rock bass. Again, the best way to ID an Ozark bass 
is to know what drainage you're fishing because the native ranges normally don't overlap. Ozark bass are native to the upland reaches of the White River system in Missouri and Arkansas. So if you're fishing a creek or small river in the White River drainage, it's most likely an Ozark bass. Ozark bass like clear rocky creeks and small rivers. Ozark bass have large mouths like all the members of this genus, so they can and do eat other fish, but they usually feed on crayfish and insects. Average size Ozark bass is probably 5 inches, and they max out around 12 inches. The IGFA All Tackle World Record Ozark bass weighed 1 pound, and there's actually a five-way tie for the record. One came from Bull Shoals Lake, and the other four came from the James River in Missouri.